Three, two, one, right. go. What's up, y'all? I'm just hanging out. Um, I thought I'd make some... I want to I wanna print some things, so I think I want to print the gourd. And I think I want to print this, like, a pumpkin. But I think I might make it a little special. So it's not really a tutorial, just kind of a true... 3D sculpt and chill. But we use select mask and actually probably just regular mask. And let's see what we get. Maybe we'll use symmetry. Let's see. Mm. Symmetry's non existent. So when symmetry is non existent, that just means it's going to be asymmetrical. But we'll still see what we can get. I do with my expanding glasses. You check your butt? So let's see what kind of face we can make with this <clears throat> rascal. Maybe we'll make something, I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to make something with the bouillon as well. I mean, that can be an eye, that's nice, but I don't know, I'm just trying to be creative. Oops. Think of what else I can do. Do like a that's kind of funny. <laughs> Maybe it's too high though. Winky. Okay, what about the mouth though? So I guess he, he probably would need a nose. <clears throat> Maybe a small nose. Maybe a mouth like this. Alternatively. You want to drive me to the post office? All right, we're back. And I think I had post process off, so we can turn that off. All right, so let's see. And also make sure you check out my, uh, I might've said this before, the, the gourd tutorial. If you want to see how to make like pumpkins and stuff like that. Uh, I just made it the similar way. I just, instead of making them, making the circles long, I just made them short for this. So let's get back to our mask and mask this out. I'm going to try not to do teeth. I always do teeth, but they never really print well. But I guess he could have some sort of, uh, if I do unmask, maybe something like this. I think something like that will work. Maybe we'll try to clean this up a little bit. Something like that. I don't know, maybe we want...
leave it we'll leave it black I think okay I kind of like that so let's invert this and let's sink this back into the head Maybe something like that. Okay, let's clear this mask. Looks a bit crazy. We'll voxel remesh it. Do it at like 250. <clears throat> uh, cleaned it up a little bit, not much. Huh. Interesting. smooth these edges well, they smooth out okay oh, yeah they smooth out all right You can always uh, pinch as well. Try to pinch back some of this edge detail. We just started watching Seiko, I think her name is. A uh, Seiko, the the new or the most recent Star Wars derivative on Disney Plus. It's pretty good. We like it so far. We have enjoyed most of the Disney, most of those like Disney Star Wars things. Maybe we'll drag and let's just make sure that I like the. Oh, I don't think I want that. Although it's kind of interesting when you when you pull it out, it kind of makes it look like it kind of makes the mouth look like it has a little more personality. Actually, I kind of like it. What if I was to do inflate up here? How would that look? Inflate and then. kind of interesting but I feel like I might want to add this crease again even going right through there I think that's kind of nice Maybe I'll add a few more. I really like this detail of the crease going across the face. So let's solo this. Actually, let's not solo it. Let's just hide this plane. We don't really need it. Get rid of that grid. I don't like these extra details. Let me turn the ambient light, the environment light up a bit so I can just see it better. I really should have uh, probably just paint this whole thing white and use the matte cap. But 
that's okay. I think that I, I think that's actually just the light, just the uh, the lighting affecting this because it's so. Actually, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I think it's just a shadow being weird. Oh, and also we might want to. So we're using crease. We can in we can increase the lazy rope stabilizer. That might make this a little bit easier to get the line straight. Oh, and also there's another little thing. Uh, is it snap radius? Yeah, so let's try snap radius. So that should allow us to make the line. And then when we stop, It'll just start up right where we left off. I want to smooth some of this. Let me take a look at the... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this white. I'll make this white as well. And then use... use a matte cap so it's a lot more clear of a picture of what we have because you see it looks a lot different than when we were just using the lights the lights can really uh, make it look not the way it's supposed to look I'm trying to smooth out some of these Make these a little bit quicker. Oh. Oh. So even when the line goes all the way down there, it tries to pick up exactly where it left off, which is cool. But I can start on the bottom and then it, I shouldn't have to worry about it trying to snap. Couple more. Okay, hopefully we didn't, no, I don't think we really messed with that other thing too much. What if there was something on the back too? Okay, maybe we'll use clay and just give him a little bit of a brow here as well, just so he has a little something. And also I wanted to smooth out inside all of this. So what I what I would like to do is probably take like black acrylic paint and just pour it in here uh, and that way it'll have a nice even layer on the bottom. Just let it sit there and let it dry. I think that'd be pretty cool. I've been trying to really figure out ways to, you know, use different types of paint, but just so they look, so it looks nice and, um, you know, professional looking. I'm going to turn the lazy, ro lazy rope stabilizer back down a bit.
I just want to I want to make these like little nicks a little bit deeper where they meet. I think that's pretty good. Now this stem, let's see if we can put a little bit of detail on that. The rest is looking pretty good. Wouldn't mind adding some lines on this. With our trusty crease tool. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so um, everything looks pretty good. I can probably just print it as is. But um, it'd be nice to bring this into into Blender as well to just kind of work on it a little bit. So uh, let's see, what shall I do? Well, first, let's save it. And then we can paint it. So we'll put this back to lit PBR. And we'll change the color to a nice orange. We'll change this to a nice kind of stem brown greenish. Something like that. Yes. And maybe I want to color in the eyes, actually. I could either color in the eyes or make something like glowing in them. Could also do that. I could probably actually cut the eyes somehow. Let's clone, um, let's clone these. So we have pumpkin and stem, and I'm gonna turn these back white. So these two, I think are ready to be, ready to send to the slicer. So I'm going to keep these hidden and we'll just move them here. I'll just stack them up like that. But this one, let's protect the rear. Always protect the rear. Let's use select mask. So we'll protect the backs. Oh, oh, oh that's weird. Here we go fully protected. Oh, you know what? The inside isn't hollow, though. Hmm. What is a good way to hollow the inside? We could try this. We could try cloning the pumpkin and then just making it a bit smaller. And then... Selecting both of them, hiding the smaller one, and then Boolean. It didn't protect the back. Interesting. So if I cloned it, maybe I need to go to this one and turn off the mask. So let's see what that does. So now it's the same thing. The smaller one's hidden. And now let's try Boolean again and see what happens. Still cuts through. Okay, so let's go to the regular pumpkin and turn that mask off. So now we have the same thing again. There's no mask. Uh, we'll 
Bush High Boolean. It still cuts all the way through. That's very interesting. I'm not sure why it does that. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I think I know why. I need to go back. So let's go back. Okay, so we have regular pumpkin here. We don't need any sort of uh, mask. I think that's what happened. I think I selected the mask. I, I, whatever, what was I saying? Protected the rear and then I shrunk it and it didn't shrink the mask because it was protected. So if I just clone this without a mask and then make it smaller. Um, let's go like this too. Let's go like this and then move this forward. Uh, no, let's just shrink it. Let's just see what happens. It's a little high. I'm going to lower it a little bit. Let's just see what happens. So now we'll select that. We'll hide the pumpkin. There's no mask this time. So now let's try Boolean. It should just cut out the middle. Okay, so that worked. It looks like it did hollow it out. There's just some parts that we can still see. So now I'm gonna protect the rear. Okay, so now that that's all protected, I should be able to just trim with the lasso. Just trim the front. So this should just trim out. Oh, oh no. Oh, it did trim all the way through. I thought that was protected. Huh. Boolean. What if I turn that off? Does it still cut all the way through? No, it doesn't this time, did it? Interesting. So trim. Let's try it again. see what happens okay it trimmed let's trim this as well okay we'll trim the back of the nose And we'll trim all this mess. Okay. Nice. So let's go ahead and get rid of this mask. And let's voxel remesh this. Get rid of those. The That's a mess though. Wish I could fix that somehow. Oh, that kind of helped a little bit. What if I try to flatten it? smooth might just have to like just do a lots of remeshing and lots of smoothing until this stuff kind of gets evened out it does seem to help a bit Is that a little piece inside? What are you up to? That little piece is kind of bugs me. It'd be hard to get rid of though. You can try hiding in the back. And then 
trying to select trim it. Oh, that was weird. I don't know what that is. Let's see if we if we remesh again what happens. Nope, still there. I guess we're just gonna have to live with it. But at least it's hollow. Oh, you know what I should make? A candle. A candle would be nice. <sighs> really hot. <laughs> I'm I'm uber hot right now. That like fan behind me is is just not doing it. Usually it's pretty good, but I don't know why I'm so hot. All right, so maybe we should do a candle. We'll do a really we'll do a simple one. Okay, so, yeah, hollow pumpkin, how big is this pumpkin, oh, 417k, Santa Maria, subdivide this thing, oh, not subdivide, that's not what I meant. Decimate. Absolutely not subdivide. I think that might be good. How big is this? We can decimate this as well. Misc. Miscellaneous. Maybe we'll leave it there. Looks like it should still fit, although... No, it looks like it should still fit. It's not the cleanest, but... Not the worst. Right, this is hollow too. That's tricky. That's tricky. Well, I guess I can. I'm not going to print this one anyway, so I guess it's fine. I'm trying to smooth inside that nose a little bit. Okay, so let's make a little candle. So let's just hide these. We'll bring our little plane back. Let me color it a different color. Let's save. And let's just make a little can. Why do I feel like the grid is back? Why does it look like that? Is it because it's not? We'll do matte cap. Make it white. Why is it that color? Or maybe it's just the lighting. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and validate that and we'll use a cylinder. And this will be our candle. Let's bring our grid, oh, that's right. We, have a, we do have a plane there. It's just awfully small. So let's let's uh, shrink this thing for now. Actually, no, let's make this bigger. Let's make it bigger. Because we're going to have to make the pumpkin and everything bigger before we send to the slicer. Okay, so now we have our candle. We'll make it a little bit higher. And what do we want to put on the bottom? Maybe we'll just have all candle. Maybe that's the way to go. So let's validate it. And I'm going to use round edge just to kind of cut the edge off. And let's use a torus. So here's the candle. Let's add a torus on the bottom. That's actually a good size. Let's use the gizmo and just move it up a bit. Maybe even stretch it out a bit. Maybe it can be a little bit thicker. And then maybe a little smaller. Okay. 
Okay, so something like that I think works. We'll validate it. And I'm gonna trim. Oh, I can't see the freaking uh, plane. Where is this plane at? I'm deleting you. I'm gonna add a box. Where's my grid? It doesn't have to be that big. We'll make it really thin. But at least now I can see it. So now I'll go back to this torus and use trim and rectangle to cut it like so. So let's take the torus and the candle and let's just voxel remesh them at like 150. We'll use symmetry and just smooth everything. All right, so I don't want to overthink this, so let's just use layer, sub, and let's kind of just do one of these. Maybe one is good, let's smooth it out. And then I think we'll just have some fun with uh, inflate. Some inflate balls. I don't think it has to be. These would probably be straight up like that. I think it would be something like that. Then we'll just make some like. I think something like that might work. We can always kind of drag it down. Ooh, it didn't really work. You know what the, the problem is, is it doesn't, uh, it's hard to get it. I guess it's wax though, so it might not actually, this might be fairly accurate for how wax would fall. I just want to make sure that they're round at least. Yeah, something like that works. So I think I'm just going to pull down from here. So there's a bit of a slope. And then just make sure that they're round on the bottom. I think that kind of makes sense to me. So inflate. Maybe just a little bit more. For the bottom part, I just want to make sure I kind of go into the ground. Something like that. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and just smooth all this out. This looks good. And then we have to do our drags. So I'll just kind of drag these parts down. And just make sure it's nice and round. So, yeah, this looks good. 
That one looks good. Did I already do that one? I don't think so. I'll use drag. Just kind of drag it straight down. Maybe get a little bit more of a curve here. Make sure I don't curve the candle itself. That looks pretty good. Can round this out a little bit. Might not even really need to be rounded out. Oops. Add a little bit of... Add a little variance to it. And I also want to make sure that these are like going flowing down into the ground. Because there really shouldn't be any sort of like lip. There we go. Like that is not good. We don't want like, I don't think this looks natural. It should be like, yeah, that's okay. I don't mind that little bit there. Drag, drag all this down. You want that spread like at the at the bottom. It's okay. I think that looks good. So now let's go ahead and trim this. Well, might as well save. So now let's trim this. Actually, maybe it's a good, better idea not to trim it. Now let's trim it, because what if I want to print it at some point in time? It'd be hard to, I don't know what I would do with the top part though, so maybe I wouldn't. I think that looks pretty good. Oh, this one is not processed. Let's take drag. This one is not processed at all. Make sure I don't mess up the actual candle too much. That looks okay. Everything looks like it's nice and flowy and it's like flowing down. Uh, I do have an issue with this a little bit. The bottom part of this. Not bad. Let me smooth it out a little bit. Maybe just maybe it needs a little bit more, but yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna smooth around it so you don't see those marks that I made. Yeah, we lost a little bit, but I think it still looks pretty good. Okay, so we need a little wick, so we'll save. So I think we can probably just use a uh, another cylinder. So we'll move it all the way up. We'll go ahead and validate it and just hit round edge, kind of round it out. And we just needed to have some, a little bit of texture. Uh, we're not going to do real texture because, um, you know, it's really small and we don't want to make this really big size. So I think we'll just run some creases into it. But I need to turn off snap radius. Okay. 
and we'll just do something like this. Just run some creases through it. I think that'll be good enough. And now for the fire. Candle wick. And we'll add a sphere, I think, for the fire. And we'll shrink. I think we can validate it. Let's just name it flame. Candle flame. Save. And then we'll use drag, and I think we'll just drag it up, maybe. We'll use a bigger drag. Yeah, I think I just want something like that. I don't think I want anything too crazy. I think that's a good flame. Be a little bit big, maybe stretch it out a little bit more. I can go right there, and it might actually be nice if we use crease and sub. It might be nice to give it a little texture. And then maybe we can take it off a sub if we want to give it a little more separation. Okay. I think that looks good. Okay, so I think it looks good. So I'm gonna take the candle. How big is the candle? So I think we can decimate the candle down some. That might be all I wanna do. Oh, we'll take it. Oh, this is getting weird down there. Let's voxel remesh it like 200. Okay, now let's see if we can decimate it back down. There we go. I wanted to get it down below 10. So that's decent. The wick we can probably decimate probably twice, maybe even three times. You hardly see it. The flame we can probably decimate. Maybe twice as good. It's gonna be glowing. Eh, I'll go back. We'll we'll leave we'll leave it at three thousand. Okay, so good. We have a little we have a little candle. Wait, what is this? Is this the hollow? I don't even remember what that is. Oh, here's the here's the print. Here's the hollow one. Let's make this big. So let's take this one. I just want to make it a bit bigger. Oh, yeah, the front. Let's look at it on the front. We'll move it up. Right about there. All right, we'll save this. Okay. And lastly, the, the last thing I want to make and hide all these is I don't know if I have a you know what I think I want to grab all of this stuff maybe not the lights no, maybe the lights too I just want to grab uh, this the rest of this stuff and uh, move over 
origin. Oh, did that move the origin to it? I'm a little confused. I don't know, I'm a little confused. But anyway, none of those are what I need, so let me just get rid of them. Let's bring the box back. I think I just want to make a regular gourd. I wish I still had the other one, but I think I... I think once I... Uh, actually, let's... Oh, this is saved. So if I open this, do I just have a regular gourd? I think I overwrote, overwrote it with this guy. Let's open these up so I don't so I don't forget what this is. We'll save it. Let's open this one up and see if I have a regular gourd. Oh, is this the pumpkin? That's the pumpkin. I don't think I have a regular gourd. I'm such a butt monkey. So I'll open this one back up and hide these. So, but a gourd is easy enough to make, so we'll just make the gourd again. So we'll do add sphere. So we'll move it up. And f you know what? Let's go ahead and validate symmetry, change this to vertex. And now let's use the oh, yeah. wrong symmetry. We'll use the Y symmetry, and we'll stretch this out a bit. Actually, let's stretch it out a bit more. Oh, oh yeah, I guess that's fine. So now I'm going to put these back to normal and just like shrink it. We'll pivot, center, pivot. So now we have, this is going to be gourd. I'm going to have to name the radial as well. So we'll add radial. And I'm going to name the radial gourd as well. So now we go to the gourd. Oh, let's see the settings. So right now there's four of them. So let's separate them. Oh. Okay, so we have four but we want some more. So let's go back to our settings. And we'll do like, yeah, maybe like that. That's good. So we'll go to our one gourd and then I think I want to remesh at like 175. And then we'll do a little bit of a round edge. So that's this one, this is the main gourd. I just wanna do some round edge. And now we can, we don't need symmetry, but we just want to make the gourd shape. So I just want to plump out the bottom. Oh, you know what? Um, Oh no, it's actually working exactly the way I want it to. Only problem is sometimes it starts to turn a bit. So that's a little concerning. Let me go back. I don't want it to turn. So that's a symmetry issue. So we don't want Y, but maybe we want X. Wait, can I turn on? Oh, show plane is on. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. So maybe it's not X. Maybe it's... Yes. Yes. So now we'll do move. We'll turn symmetry on. So now it shouldn't spin as I, as I adjust them. It should just move the way I want it to move. So let's puff out the, the bottom part. Sometimes I have to switch the ones that I'm editing. I 
I'd like to print this for my mom. Because she likes, like, Halloween stuff. Oh, you know another problem with these? It looks good on the bottom, but I don't think there's enough. I think I need to squeeze it together and add a few more. I think that's better. So now let's go back to the gourd. Back to move. Let's look at the front. And we might be able to smooth some of this too to just make it round. Because whatever is happening to one, it's happening to the other ones. And we can always voxel remesh too. We can voxel remesh and smooth, and that'll make it even more smooth. So that looks good. So maybe we'll move this in a little bit. And maybe we'll just move it in here, but puff it out a little bit. Up here. Oh, that feels, that feels gordy. You can stretch it with the, oh, let's do pivot. Oh no, it's, it's that's right, we, that's fine. We can just stretch it a little bit. Let's turn the pivot thing off. Make it a little taller. Oh, and I think I might want to tilt it a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's a good looking gourd. That is a good looking gourd, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so tube on the top. So we'll just use, we can use curve, I think. Yeah, let's use curve. Uh, we don't need snap. Let's kind of make something a little funky here. Oh, that might be a little too funky. Let's take it out of the radio. Yeah, that's way too funky. So this one needs to go in the middle. I kind of wanted to do like a little bit of a curly sort of thing. Oh, I, you know what? There might be a better way. Is there a better way to do that? By using twist? Ugh, I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're there yet. This looks awful. So essentially, okay, spline is on. Essentially what I was trying to do is, even though it looks pretty bad, I was thinking about this, we wanna make this straight up. And I was thinking about making it like, kind of like a curly, curly Q type shape. So that would be like that. This one can be out here. Let's make it a little less weird looking. So let's take the radius twice and let's spread this part out. Let's lose one of those. Let's move this out a bit. Kind of make this a little more curly. Yeah, something, something like that. Maybe that's too much. So uh, let's, now we, I hit the radius again so I can, I wanna put a node here and I wanna spread the bottom out a little bit more. Although I might not have to. Let's put this a little closer maybe. Maybe, lose, maybe losing one. Maybe losing a few. We'll make that a little 
little smaller. It's kind of nice. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Let's see what happens if we do a profile. See what this looks like. So that's round. But you can add, you can add little things like this, which make it interesting. So what if I do this? What if I, oops. What if I cut more of a roll and get rid of that spline? Try to just straighten these out. Yeah, let's tap them so that they're all straight. So hopefully this kind of makes sense. It actually is, is pretty interesting. I never really worked through it this much, but it does make sense. I mean that's exactly what I what I wanted. And there's probably a way to make it a little bit more defined by turning the division down. Perhaps. Uh, I don't think I like that though. We'll turn it back up. Was that 30? Maybe it was at 30. I mean, it's still small, so that actually is that actually is good. And I like those curves. So I think maybe I would keep it. Is it too big for this gourd, though? That's the, the real question. I think it's fine. I think it might be fine. Okay, so I kind of like this. Let's take a look on the front. I want to twist. Let's do a line, and I'm going to do pivot center pivot I'm going to move the pivot to the base the middle of the base actually no that's that's dumb the better thing to do is just to take the whole thing snap uh, we'll try 45 let's just snap it there you go, that's what I really want, is the front. Is it still in the middle? It feels like it moved over. Oh, I know why. We'll do it, we'll change it later. I know why. So let's take the gourd and validate and join children. So now the gourd has a different center pivot and this thing, let's validate that as well. So now they should line up a bit more. So they should just spin. Well, it still moves a little bit, but that's okay. But I like this for the center. Move origin. Oh, that's fine. That is fine. So we'll call this gourd stem. Do I want to put a face in there for my mom, for my mom's gourd? I think first things first, I should, well, this is 244, so that's huge. I want to, let's save. Let's voxel remesh the gourd at like, let's voxel remesh at like 300. So now they're together, and I'm going to do round edge. And now I'm going to... Mm, do I want to do details first? Because this would be a great time to do details. I kind of want to do a cute one. So you know what we'll do? I'm going to clone this. 
I'm gonna clone this. I'm gonna hide these for now. So this gourd radio, I'm gonna decimate. And that's all this will be, is just the gourd. Ooh. So we'll keep it at 7,000. The stem I think is really small. Yeah, the stem is small, so that's good. Okay, so this is this is good for now. Although I didn't make the piece on top though. Let's back it up. Let's just back it up and make this the, the printable piece. So to make this the print printable piece. First, I need to take the gourd and the stem and hide the gourd. And then I need to do a Boolean. That should trim the stem. But before I do that, I'm gonna voxel remesh this. Before I do that, I'm going to do multi-res and subdivide it, maybe even twice. Then I'm gonna voxel remesh it. We shouldn't get those blocks anymore. Voxel remesh it, it looks good. Then I'm gonna take the gourd radial. Now I'm gonna do the Boolean. And it should be much cleaner. Obviously it still has its issues but it's, at least it's much cleaner. Um, let's see. So I'm gonna take select mask and rectangle and mask off the top now. And then take the gizmo and stretch this straight down. And I'm gonna use this green to flatten out that bottom. So this is, I think that's what I want. And we can actually, uh, we can lower the size a bit like that. So let's now let's remove the mask and box remesh it again around the same size. I don't think I, I don't really, it doesn't really matter that it's not the nicest. Okay, so now we have the mesh and the original gourd. Okay, so this is perfect. So now we'll take the stem, we'll clone the stem. Uh, let's take the gourd radial and we'll make it blending and bring the blending down. So now we can see through it. So now we want to, so this is the original mesh. This is gonna be the mesh cut. So let's rename it so we don't get them confused. Let's do a quick save. So this is the mesh cut. So the mesh cut is going to be, uh, let's do pivot, center, pivot. And actually I wanna move this, I wanna move this pivot to right in the middle. I'm gonna move that pivot right there. So this is mesh cut, which will be bigger. And if we wanna see it, we can change this to blending as well. We just have to remember to change them both back. So now we can make this bigger. It's still recording? Yes. We'll make this bigger. Okay. So that's pretty good. And I'm thinking about, you know what, actually, um, I think it's actually fine. So let's move it down. 
The only problem I have sometimes is it's... Um, you know what? I think I know a way that I can remedy what I'm worried about. So now let's just bring it down. So I think that's good. So we'll bring it down there. And... Yeah, so I think that's... I think that's pretty good. The only other thing that I was worried about, uh, let's go ahead and change both of these back to opaque. The only other thing I was worried about was this mesh, the one that isn't the cut. I'm gonna solo it and then I'm gonna trim the bottom. That way there's plenty of room for it to move down. So I'm just gonna trim the bottom a little bit. I think that I think that makes sense. I probably should have put a uh, I probably should have put some sort of key. Probably would have been smart to do. Um, but you know what you know what I can do? I can I can do a I can do a key, actually. I can do a key. So this is the front. So we'll look at the top. I'm gonna to tilt it a little bit. No, actually we'll do it a different way. We'll look at the bottom. Uh, we'll look at the bottom and then we'll, what's the best way to do it? Oh, I have an idea. We'll take select mask and uh, protect all that. And then we will just take trim or no, we'll take stamp. Stamp is good. So we'll use stamp. There's our alpha. I'm just going to scroll it up. So it's just white inside the red line, the red circle. Um, I want this to be flat. I think, I think that's fine. So now with stamp, I'll know that this is the exact, oh, you know what? I wanna do, take it off symmetry and I wanna do sub. Ooh, I want it to be deeper. Okay. I didn't know it was gonna do all that. I just want to like, oh, you know what? There's a, I have a better idea. I always have, I, I just, I guess this is how I work. We'll make something like this. Let me unmask. Let me clear everything and then do it. Oh, it's going through, you stupid. Let's go up to the settings and oh, where is that? It's in here, front facing vertex only. It's way too much work. So now we'll invert it and then we'll just take this and lift it up and just flatten it. And actually we can bring it down a little bit. Okay, so now we know that that's the front on this piece. When I print it, that will be very helpful. So I can unsolo it. I can get rid of the mask. I never made the I never made the thingy. Did I not make the cut? I didn't make the cut yet, did I? I didn't make the cut yet. So let's make the cut. So mesh cut, gourd, we'll hide mesh cut, boolean, boolean, boolean. Okay. So now we'll solo this. We know that if we look at the top, we know that this is the front. So we'll do the same exact thing. We'll just use select mask. We'll make a little box here. Stupid symmetry. We'll make 
make a little box, invert it, and then just bring it down a little bit. I better not have done anything on the bottom of this. Okay, good. Don't think it did. So now we can go ahead and clear the mask. And we can take a look at it from the front. So yeah, that shouldn't hurt anything, but at least it sh tells me that I know which one is the front. So this is the gourd. Oh, come on, STL, the worst. This is the gourd stem. solo them and that's good that should fit in there nicely should fit very nicely so all of these do I want to put a design on this one I can't remember if we made up our minds on that let's use uh, let's oh let's just use a sphere and take a quick look See if there's anything we like. Mirror it. So look at the front. No, it looks pretty looks pretty weird. I don't think it would look cute with that. I think it's just um oh uh, there there is we could do the other thing that we did with select mask we could do like i guess symmetry doesn't work unfortunately no the symmetries are a bit off Oh, isn't there a way to like change the symmetry though? Something weird? Gizmo edit? I mean, this makes it look like this, this symmetry should be working fine. It's like exactly in the middle. It's exactly in the middle. That's what I get confused with. Reset object center. Reset orientation. Is it? It's weird, but like if I put symmetry on, the symmetry is, doesn't look like it's in the middle. If this is the front, why wouldn't the symmetry be down the middle? So I'm a little confused. Oh, oh, can I rotate it? It doesn't rotate the, that's annoying though, because it doesn't rotate just the symmetry line, which I thought it would. You can feely set the symmetry plane. This feature is a bit experimental. You should probably never use it. <laughs> guy Steph he's always pulling fast ones on us oh it worked I think it worked why should you never use it why should you never use it I gotta make that a little tutorial in itself I'm, I'm gonna cut this up to little tutorials I've never done that before let's make sure it works so symmetry, mask, oh, it works too. Oh, that's been such an annoying thing that I've been trying to figure out. I knew it was there, but you know, sometimes you just kind of like, I don't know what happens. Anyway, we, we, need, to, we need to polish this one off. So let's just see if, we, if I want to add anything 
to this little gourd. What if we want to do like something cute? Why is it so, why is it looking so crazy? It's weird, it's a bit strange. If I remesh it, oh no, oh, now it's a little bit better. Hmm. Symmetry off and just clean these up. I feel like the eyes might be too too close together in order for me to really get it right. Well, that's okay. We'll undo it. So this is gonna be this is gonna be the printed one. So let's just bring it down. Bring it down, still looks good, still, ooh, keep it up at 8,000. This, decimate, 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 uh, still looks good. Still looks good, happy with that. So now all these pieces, so we have this one, STL, did I name the other one STL? Where's the other pumpkin? That's the regular, oh, here it is. So this is, so if I hide this and bring this back, let's make these bigger. I actually have to make them much bigger. So let's bring back, uh, add. Well, here's what you do, add a box, turn the, turn the grid on and add a box. And let's see if we can just snap point 0.1. Do we want point 0.1? So we're just gonna snap it into these little boxes with this snap. And then we uh, we add a an array. But we don't need it that way, so we'll turn that off. I think it's only up. That's what exactly what we want. Um, we don't need to fit inside, so then we can just count up to about like 70. Actually, 70 is probably too big. Let's just do, uh, let's do 40. So we'll do 40. So now I'm going to take... Uh, let's take the box out and the array out. You can turn the grid off. So now I'm going to take this pumpkin, this old pumpkin that we made, and I'm going to make it big. Because believe it or not, this is not that big on a 3D printer. Nomad stuff is just really small. So this is going to be pumpkin stem B. This is going to be pumpkin B. Okay, so these are good. I can probably send them to my computer, but maybe I'll do it afterwards. So that's perfect. Uh, let's look at the size of these things. Pretty big. So let's just decimate. 49 and we'll decimate the hell out of this thing. Heck, heck out of this thing. Oh, we'll keep it there. Okay, so now these are good. These are good to go. So let's bring back our gourd. We'll make this big.
Okay, that's good. Check the sizes. Yep, sizes are small. Great, so now these are good to go in the slicer. So uh, for these parts, I'm just gonna send, so this is the Gord STL. So I'm sending all of these. Wait, no, where's the other, oh, there they are. So we're sending all of these, we'll start with the Gords. So this is just Gord STL. So I'm going to send it as an STL. Only include the one object, don't need the color. Wait, is it STL or OBJ? I think it's STL. So we'll export the STL. I, every time, I always forget. If I don't print in a while, I really just forget. So we'll send it to the computer. And I'm gonna send each one, and I'm gonna go to the computer now so I can show you how I rename each of these files. All right, welcome to the computer. So here you see this is the pumpkin STL. And I think this was the uh, gourd. I think it was the regular gourd. So I'm just going to rename it. Oh, yeah, because you can see, you can actually, I don't know if I can make it bigger. You can actually see like the, what it is. So this is just the gourd. So that's the first one. So I'm just going to send over the other one. Uh, I should have probably sent them over. The only problem is they all have the name of the file and not the, not the layer name. So that's a bit annoying. So here's the gourd stem. So that will show up in a second. So yeah, you, you have to send over all your STLs separately, unfortunately. So gourd stem. And then pumpkin stem. And then pumpkin. Yeah, it's a little, um, it's a little annoying to have to do it this way. But uh, when I have the separate pieces, you know, sometimes I have a ton of pieces that I have to bring over. But, but I like pieces so much better. I just love being able to paint things. Um, you know, just being able to paint stuff. So now I have my STLs here. I'm just gonna make a new folder. And this is going to be pumpkin prints. So pumpkin prints. And I think I'm just going to bring them down into STL files. Whoops. If I can ever bring them in there. Uh, this is the worst. I, I would have to say that this is the worst thing. Come on, please just let me. <laughs> what are you doing? You're killing me. There we go. STL files. Okay, so pumpkin prints. So we'll leave that open. So now I'm going to open lychee slicer. And again, I, I, I tried Shitubox. I, I love the people there. It's like such great people. I, you know, I talked to them. They're really cool and really supportive. Um, but I just had some problems with the app and just like the being able to move around. Uh, so, you know, I don't think, I don't think a lot of people do 3d on Macs and on laptops, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to decline this. Um, but I use a laptop. I have like a touch pad and, um, you know, I just had a lot of issues trying to move it around. You can't move it, excuse me, my drinking. You can't move it freely in the other one. So now I'm just gonna grab all of these and just drag them in. And you see, they all just drag in here. And this is the size of them. So this is the, so this is actually quite small. And you can look at them, if I hit export and then hit at scale, so you can see how small this is. So this is like almost the size of like a banana. So it's not really that big. Um, so I probably could have made it, I probably could have made it bigger. Um, uh, I mean, I, I guess I kind of like it small. I might make it a little big, a little bigger. So we have the, 
Let's go back to layout up here and I'm just gonna move the pumpkin, move these things around so we can see which is which. Okay, this is the pumpkin, I think, and I think this is the gourd. Oh, that didn't really work in there. Oh, that's the pumpkin. Oh yeah, we see the hole for the gourd here. And we see the hole, so this is the gourd. So I'm gonna bring this one back and up, just so it's kind of like close by. And this one I'll bring over and up. And they're a bit small, so I think, I think I wanna make them both a little bit bigger. Let me look at at scale again. Yeah, they're almost, they're like as tall as a banana. I think that's too small. So I'm just gonna select all of them and then go to scale. Oh, not that. <laughs> so you just wanna use this yellow box. Come on, select them all, there we go. Now I'll just resize them a little bit. Uh, yeah, maybe something like that. Maybe a little bit bigger. Maybe the pumpkin I'll have there and then I'll make the gourd a little bit bigger. Let's look at the layout. Do I want it as tall as a soda can? That's actually not bad. Okay, so the gourd is good. So all this stuff is good. So now I'm just gonna sort of uh, move it to, so I don't want anything to, to happen to the back of the pumpkin face. So I'm gonna tap R so I can rotate this. Not that it really makes a difference, but R and T is what I use mostly. Um, so, so now I'm going to go R and just rotate it like this. And then T to bring it up. Because you don't want it too close to the... Um, you don't want it too close to the, the bed. So this actually can probably go right here. I think that's fine. And I might rotate it so uh Yeah, I think I'm going to rotate it like this. And then move it up a little bit. Okay, so I think that's good. So next we have our gourd. I will rotate. And then move it up. Doesn't really need to go anywhere further than like, or any higher than the pumpkin. So I think this is good. I'm gonna move it all the way to the end. And this too, I'm gonna move all the way to the end. Then we have this little piece. Oh, this I can probably move. You know what I can do? I can rotate it. Oh, you know, maybe I can't rotate it. I can move it over to the edge. I'll move it over to the edge and then this I will move here. So that fits nicely. So this was the first app that I used. So I think that's why it's so much easier for me to be able to like move around and zoom in. Uh, Cause it actually works just like Blender. The controls are exactly the same as Blender. So that's just like, it's so easy for me to move it around. And I just got used to that. Okay, I think this is good. 
I'm going to move this down a smidge. And actually, for this one, I think I'm going to rotate it this way so that the least amount is like on the edge. This is easy to smooth, so I think that is good. I think that will work. Part of me wants to copy these and maybe make them a little bigger. Let me save the scene. And we'll just name it Pumpkins. And you know what? We'll save it in Pumpkin Prince. I think that's just fine. Okay, so this is pretty good. Maybe I should just double it up and make two of them rather than put a whole bunch of other random stuff here. So I'll take both of these and maybe I can do control C and control V. I actually don't know. Nope. Uh, a little copy. Copy, keep arrangement, duplicate. Okay. Perfect. That was easy. So maybe I will spin it. And maybe I'll just make this one a little bit bigger. Oh, let's move. Let's go to scale. Okay. I think that seems pretty good. These higher? No, they look around the same. So the only thing I have to adjust now is these little guys. Well, this one. I can probably move this up to the edge. Okay, that looks good. And now I can move these up as well. And I actually have a little more, I actually have a decent more, decent amount of room. Well, that's underneath. I don't think that's good. Let me rotate this. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, that's perfect. So I have a little more room, so I'm going to go ahead and... Well, let's rotate this a little bit too. And let's move it up a smidge. And maybe a smidge over. There we go. So I'm going to grab a couple other, maybe some of my fruit pudgies. I'm going to grab some of those and bring those over too. Because uh, since I have this extra space, uh, I might as well, might as well use it. And I've been wanting to, to do those for a while. So uh, I will... I'll be right back and we'll send this off to get uh, for all the rest of the um, things we have to do to get this sliced. I'll be right BRB. Screen, I brought in um, one of my little fruit pudgy characters. I did two different sizes, this guy here, this guy here, and I cut it up so it should fit, everything should fit in the, uh, in the spaces nicely. Uh, but we'll see, I've been really working on that. So hopefully these work. Uh, I made them a little bit high. I don't want them too low. So I just want to make sure that they're not too close to the bed. These all look pretty good. I'll raise these up a little bit more. Um, but I think that's pretty good. So now once I have, now that I have this done, I'll make sure I save the scene. Okay, so now everything is saved and I can go to prepare. So first I'm going to hollow everything out. So 
I'll go over here to hollow and diameter uh what oh hollowing 2d that's where I usually go on thickness 2.5 I think I usually go like 1. 1.3 now infills 20% I'm gonna go to like I'm gonna go to 5% we're just gonna try something new here holes so holes are um, essentially so like um, resin can drain out of the bottom so I'm gonna put some holes here I want to add some here, not necessarily because it needs holes, but because it'll give me something to grab onto when I'm going to paint it, like I can put the clip onto. So I'm not sure how big this is. So you have to select whichever one you want to put the hole uh, diameter. I'll make this one really small. Maybe even smaller than that. Yeah, maybe just something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'll make this maybe around three. It doesn't go through, so that's fine. So I'm going to put one here too. And those are mostly just so I can grip onto those things. So hopefully, uh, see these are, these are actually a bit smaller. So I might have to try to make this even a little bit more small. But hopefully that still works. Just make sure it's not coming out on any other side. Okay, I think that should work. I think this, I can probably just clip it on. It would be nice if I had a place to grab, so. Uh, but this is very small here though. But you know what, let's make it a little smaller, 2.5. And we'll add it here. Maybe we'll try to make it a tad bit even smaller than that. I'd like two. And I'll do the same thing with this one. But I can make it a little bit bigger on that one. So maybe 2.5. Or 2.6. Because that's the only issue. Sometimes I'm, I would make things and then I wouldn't be able to uh, paint them easily. And that was so annoying. So now let's do this one so we can make the hole a bit bigger. Maybe even 7.5. So that's that's fine. That's going into the uh, the horn. Or the, not the horn. <laughs> the stem. We'll put one here too. Okay, that should be fine this big guy actually let's do the smaller ones first let's see what else it's kind of small these ones are kind of small all right so we'll we'll make this a little bit smaller that should be good and on this one we'll do the same thing Maybe we'll make it a smidge smaller. Okay, I think that's good. Nothing's showing. So then we have the pumpkins. So the pumpkins, we can do one in the top and the bottom. So we can do one here. Um, maybe a little bit smaller. can also do one here then we flip and do one underneath we'll, oh you know what let's not do that we'll go back to this one and put one right on the bottom We'll do something like that. I think that should be fine. Although it does make me a little nervous to have so many holes like that. But the problem is, is I don't want, um, you know what? I think the resin is going to come out of the, these more bottom areas. 
so I think it's probably smarter to do it like this. Because the resin is going to settle. So I think that's I think that's a smarter position. I don't think you'll see them. Yeah, you won't see them. So for this one, yeah, this is the bottom. So we'll just put it along the inside on the bottom. I think that's perfect. Okay, so we have another gourd here. Oh no, do we do this gourd? No, that's the big gourd. So we'll do these. Make that a bit bigger. So we'll put some holes there. And this one, we'll put some holes along the bottom. Okay. I don't think we need any there. I think everything will drain out of the bottom. We'll put one right in the middle. Okay, I think that's perfect. For these guys, I think on the bottom might be fine. Maybe we'll do one bigger one on the bottom. So these would be easily washed. We'll do this one a little bit bigger. Okay. I could do a small one in the top, but I think that I think it's too small, to be honest with you. I don't think I don't think that'll be an issue. You know what, I'm going to put two small little ones in the eye. I don't think these will make a difference, but I don't know. I get nervous that like there's going to be some pressure or something built up in them. So I just get nervous. So I'm going to make some really small ones. I don't even know if these will actually work as holes. They might be too small, but... You definitely won't see them because they're inside the eyes. So I'm not worried about that. So now I think they're all holed up. I think I got everything. Okay, so now they're good. I'm gonna save the scene. Okay, so everything is saved. So next, oh, next I have to add supports. So we go to supports and I just do automatic supports, medium. Oh, I need to select everything. I always forget to do that. Select everything and then generate automatic supports. All right, like this is this. So I'm fast forwarding right now. So hopefully you don't have to sit here as long as I've actually 
had to sit here because it's taking forever. It's a lot of supports. Okay, it looks like everything is good. Looks like everything is good. A uh, little bit of an issue there, but I don't think that'll bother anything. I think that's fine. So yeah, everything looks good. Everything looks nice. So yeah, I usually just trust in them. I don't, sometimes I don't even know, I don't even think I need some of these supports, but I usually just leave them. Everything looks good, everything's connected. Even all these little bits, they're all, they all look connected. Everything looks strong. Oh, I do see an issue though. Why is this hole super big right here? I must have uh, did it, made the hole, and then like went to thought I went to something else, and then like changed the size. Because if you change the size, then it actually changed whatever the last hole that you were working on. So let me just make sure that there's no more of that. Looks like everything else is good. Oh, this looks like an issue as well. What is up with that? It's another issue. I'm trying to spin this thing. Another hole that's like super way too big. That's good. I'm going to go a little bit smaller. That should be good. All right, I got to make sure I check all these other these other ones. Cuz that can really mess you up. Make things look really bad. And prints take too long to you know, you can't fart around with them. It takes it just takes way too long to print. How are they looking inside the eyes? Inside the eyes looks fine. Holes on top all look fine. No hole here. Interesting. No, nope, I'm going to undo that. Let me see if I can, there we go. Put the hole back here, where it was. I must say that's very strange. I don't remember having issues like this. Or maybe I just didn't check well enough. I probably did have issues like this. And I just didn't check. All right, I think everything else looks good. See the holes in there, see the holes in there, holes in the bottom. This hole is too, way too small. Caught another problem. These are all a bit small, but I think they'll be fine. All right. I do get impatient after a while. I'm just like, all right, if there's another mistake, then that's just that's just going to be it. I can't play the games. But everything else looks pretty good. All right, so once you checked all that out, Go ahead and save. Save again. OK, 
Okay. Everything looks Gucci. So now it is time to export. Export slices to file. So now I'm going to take my, um, oh, hey, my memory stick, the one provided by Anacubic. So I'll take the memory stick and put it in the computer. Okay, and now I will continue. And I will put this in Anacubic Pumpkins and I will save this file. So now it's just going through and it's that's these are all the layers. And um yeah, after that I will I will put this into the 3D printer. I'm probably going to do it tomorrow cuz I'm going to go to bed and I don't want to be breathing it in all night cuz my printer's in my room. So I'll probably start it in the morning. Um while I can not be in my room or I can just choose to leave my room. And then I'll just see uh, how it prints. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. I appreciate you guys hanging with me. Uh, this is a long, it's a long process. You know, after I do this, hopefully it prints good. And then I have to do, I have to process the print, um, wash them, rinse them, cure them, let them sit outside for a little while. Then I have to wet sand and prime and then paint. So there's just a lot of steps involved. It is fun though, I, I'm, I will say that though, it's a lot of fun. And it is fun to kind of share it with people that like, you know, might want to do the same sort of thing. Because I think you can learn a lot. At least I don't, you know, if I fail or if I mess up or if things don't turn out right, you can kind of see what I did and you can kind of be with me when I figure out how to fix them. And you can avoid doing the same things that I do. Um, this one is it's really not that high, so it might not even be too bad, actually. It might be a faster print, but I don't know. We'll see. Nice. I love it. But yeah, anyway, that's it. So it's, gonna, it's on the card now, and I will update you guys soon. All right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to give this a like. Thank you.